Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Dai Kaiju from Rising Sun. This is the first in the series and I will be painting more, so if you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing if you want to see when I post future videos. Additionally, if you do end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's always appreciated. Now, before we get started and before I get to the miniature, I do want to say that I have changed my camera angle and have changed my filming technique slightly, so I hope you appreciate what I hope are improvements. But let me know either way in the comments below. Alright, let's get started. So at first I'm going to just be trimming the flash. I always try to show uh, how bad the mold lines are, whether they're hard to get to, how long it takes. If you've seen my stuffed fables video, you can see a lot of common comments on that. Um, on this one, it wasn't too bad, though they were kind of hard to notice. I think it's a little bit more noticeable after the paint, as always. I, I got a fair bit of them. Um, if you ever want, I have had luck priming the miniature and then trimming the mold lines. They're pretty minor and pretty small, and so trimming off the prime with that mold line isn't too bad. A lot of times the prime will help just show them to a little bit better. When the whole model is gray like this, it can be kind of hard to, to see them or to tell exactly how flat you have it. But either way, not too bad, just a a little on the kind of ridges. Uh, Simon normally does a really good job on their placement of the mold lines um, to where they're just they're, they're put in places that are easy to get to and not as noticeable. So as you can see there are some gaps here so I'm gonna take this liquid green stuff from Citadel. I'm gonna take this kind of scraping tool that I stole from my wife's uh, beauty supply or torture device chamber or whatever you call these kind of devices. I don't know. Normally you'd think a, a dentist or something would have this. And you just group a little bit, uh, scoop up a little bit, and plow it onto the uh, kind of the, the seam there or the gap. And it will kind of naturally pull in there, but you can push it in. And then what I tend to do is scrape it a little bit with the tool that I'm using. Um, and I, by the way, I'm only filming me uh, putting it on the gap. I don't, I don't film the, the kind of cleanup process, but I'll, I'll explain it. So um, I then kind of trim the majority of it with the tool, and then I actually just use my finger to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And that does a fine job. Remember, you will be painting over it. Uh, keep in mind that this is kind of like molding here. So like on where the, the jaw uh, meets uh, right there, you want to make sure not to... Um, cover up the kind of, uh, I don't know what that is, the membrane that's showing on the side of the mouth, uh, because otherwise you're going to paint over it and it's going to look kind of weird. But yeah, so the tail has several sections, each arm and leg have a section, those are not too bad. This is showing that I am priming it, but it is in gray, so it's not very noticeable, but it is there, it's a little dip, bit of a different gray, and starting out with Mechanicus Standard Gray from Citadel. Now I'm just painting the ridge with this, it's just straight up Mechanicus Standard Gray, and there's a lot of surface area here. This is a very large model, as you can see, uh, compared to my hand here. Uh, quite large. This is starting to stretch what we call a miniature. So I guess for the Godzilla kind of guy he is, he's a miniature. Now, I want to slow down here real quick. This is now a, a, at one speed, just to show how I'm getting the sides there. So I'm just kind of sticking my brush in there. It's not too bad. This is the first thing we're painting. It's a base coat. We're going to be painting on top of it, and honestly, I don't mind if I get a little bit of gray right where that ridge meets. I'm going to be putting plenty of shadow there and other paint layers to cover that up. So you don't need to be too careful, but you do want to get the side. So be sure to, you know, just kind of run your brush along. And don't jam it in there. That's a good way to ruin a brush, um, unless you want to grab a brush and, and, and ruin one for it. But I wouldn't suggest it. It's easy enough just to slide it on the side. Now. I personally kind of hate painting round things, <laughs> and this one's full of it, and and really what I mean is like, and you'll see it on the tendrils, you'll see it on these spikes, but the backs of them are always hard to get. Now this, this top part here, the mold kind of goes away here, so I'm making sure I go at the end and pulling back so I keep that point, and I just put it right around. Uh, to the ends of his eyes there. And I'm only going to show you that half of it. So I've already done the other half and now I'm onto the body. So here's Steel Legion Drab, this uh, straight up Steel Legion Drab. And uh, as you can see, I'm just kind of wiping it. Again, not too careful. It's really easy to keep your brush fairly flat here along the edge, but otherwise I'm globbing it on here. Now, I'm using a regiment brush from the Army Painter. You could use the Monster Brush if you wanted. Um, though, again, once you get bigger, you do lose a little bit of control. So I'm able to use the regiment brush here on the face 
uh, and be fine. I'm, I'm not getting it all over his mouth or anything. I'm able to get around kind of those tendrils on the bottom just fine uh, along the ridge like I kind of slowed down to show you there. Um, around his arms, I'm not getting it on his stomach. So, you know, th there's there's always a, um, a, a point of contention there. Uh, real quick, I'm getting the spikes and I'm also putting that line about halfway down that kind of raised ridge right near his head and neck and it kind of goes away by the time it reaches his feet. Um, but, you know, just kind of an FYI there, about halfway through. I'm not going to do a wet blending. Uh, with enough layers, it's going to blend quite well anyway. Um, so I, I don't mind the regiment brush and just having to load paint on it constantly. Uh, but you could probably do, you know, swap between the two and do a, a monster brush if you have a bigger brush. Um, and then swap to a regiment brush later. That's not, not too bad. And, and again, so I haven't gotten the claws yet, but I'm able to keep pretty good control. If you did paint over the claws, that wouldn't be the end of the world. The claws are darker, so it's quite easy to paint over. If they were lighter, I would say differently. Um, and, and again, there is... So the mold li lines, again, get a little um, blurry here, but there is a natural ridge. That being said, as you can see, I'm putting paint past the ridge. So you can kind of see the ridge there. Um, towards the middle of the tail and I'm putting paint on the other side just to give it a little bit of a slight um, uh, Blending to it once I add the other colors It'll change the color ever so slightly because these are all still kind of opaque and I wanted to make sure that or uh, translucent and I wanted to make sure that It just looks fairly natural, right? Uh, this is not armor and so hard lines aren't really a thing on this model and really that means you can be a bit more forgiving in your painting which is kind of nice back to mechanic is standard gray i did not do this when i had mechanic is standard gray out the first time on my brush just because i wanted to paint that jawline um you could do it in the opposite you could probably do the the tendrils um again make sure you get every single side uh, turn the model around a lot to make sure you don't miss a spot one of the joys of painting these around things see oh look there's some more i didn't paint i'm gonna do that a lot um, anyway, you could do the gray first if you wanted. It's it's not a huge deal. Uh, Known oil. This is uh, not watered down or anything straight up. And I am just, you know, dragging it down the miniature. So a lot of times with ridges, I like to drag up because it'll pull up more in the in in the ridges, right? Where one where it like dips down to the next plate. And these are all defined enough to where I'm not too concerned about that. I feel it'll kind of naturally do that. And I wanted to get those kind of streak marks in it so you can see there's a texture on the ridges that have like those lines and so going not against the grain but you know uh, with the grain I guess you could say is fairly nice. Again make sure you get um, all of the spikes. I'm working pretty quick here mainly because I'm going to be covering most of this unit in this known oil so I don't have to be too careful. So here I am putting it on the steel leech and drab and this will get into all the recesses, all the ridges. Uh, very very nice and detailed this miniature by the way is just fantastic when it comes to you know just quality and sculpt design and just how how it's assembled I really like it I I, I dig his arm positions um, it'd be really easy to do something different and I'm glad it's kind of a, a, I don't know, it's a it's a unique pose for that I love the um, excessive ridges on the back I've always liked that kind of view of the kind of Godzilla or you know Lord of the Monsters kind of uh, view as a, uh, it gives him more character as opposed to maybe more realistic ridge line which I like and his tail swirled in the back and just just all around a really good model and very easy to paint by the way if, if you're kind of new to painting but you're wanting to paint Rising Sun this is a fantastic model to start with you, you get to use some washes you get to base coat really easily you get to um, do some dry brushing later on it just, uh, you know, even even getting the eyes, which is the most fiddly part of this miniature, is super easy to do. All around, a, a very good miniature to quickly add a lot of, um, you know, color to it. So I did water down the Nolan Oil, and then going from the end to the top. Remember, wherever you leave your brush is where it's going to pull the most. I'm just adding a slight amount of darkness um, to the tendrils. I'm going to add another color later on. Uh, that'll again differentiate it. So this is uh, the Steel Legion Drab along with Mechanica Standard Gray. One to one mixed. This is just as a dry brush as I, as you can see. I just kind of lightly feather it on there. It looks like I'm jamming it now that it's fast. That's another reason why I kind of slowed it down. It's very lightly touched. Just trying to barely kind of 
brush the edges. You get most of the paint off the brush and you just wipe it clean where there, there's almost no paint on it. But there is a little bit and it's getting on those ridges. And this is keeping the brown so you still get that brown color but bringing it closer to the gray. Otherwise that gray and brown are going to look like it doesn't belong on the same animal. And so now we got Steely to Drab and Administer on Gray, but a 2 to 1. So it's a brighter gray, but still more brown. So it's a brighter brown instead of really a lighter gray, but it still works in both spectrums. And I'm very, and this is watered down quite a bit, so it's a highlight layer. And I'm very casually, um, in air quotes, highlighting the ridges. Um, if you were crazy, you could highlight each individual scale here. Um, but I pray you're not. If you are, you're probably a better painter than me anyway, because um, I don't spend that much time on these. Um, and, and I don't suggest you do too with over 100 miniatures in the Kickstarter. Uh, you're you're going to have your hands full for a while, and this will take you a long time otherwise for a miniature that's otherwise very quick. So I'm just kind of haphazardly getting some of them, not quite all of them. In fact, I speed up more and more as I find I can really just kind of brush this along almost like a dry brush and get fairly good. If, if, if you do get too strong of a coat, again, you can dab with your finger and it's no problem because you're just getting the tops anyway, so it's easy to rub off. This also adds another color variation. So now we have the Steel Legion Drab, we have an Administratum Gray added to it, we have the, um, you know, the Nuln Oil, and, and all of this together just gives it a little bit more lifelike look in the skin which I like. Make sure to put a nice good um, highlight on those uh, those spikes around his kind of neck flap uh, kind of as I did. It really makes him stand out and pop out as yeah these are actually spikes um, from farther away which looks nice. Um, and, and again I'm not worried about whether it's under the arm or above the arm. This is not a, a highlight from a light source. This is just kind of a general um, these bits are raised and then there's a bit of a color a variation. So here I'm taking that Administratum Gray, again very watered down, and just putting kind of a, a ridge on all of these round gray bits. Um, so it'll be a little bit brighter. It looks even brighter when it's wet. When it dries it darkens a little bit because some of what you're seeing is actually the water and reflecting whatever light source you're looking at. And then I'm also, I'm not worried about the ridges on the, along it. Instead on the major bits of the ridges I'm getting each spike and then the very bottom edge of it. And then I'm actually going to go back and get kind of the corners here. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just kind of running it along the edge but kind of more on the top than on the edge and that allows uh, just kind of to naturally have the brush on, on the side of the brush. Just give this um, kind of slight differentiation in the lightness of the gray which just makes it look a lot more lifelike. I, I would suggest you don't skip this mainly because it's easy and again you're working in such a big surface area and the colors are so forgiving between the two it's really easy to to practice on and if you are good at it um, I don't claim to be but if you are then it's really easy to do anyway and adds a lot especially to this tail. I especially like the end of it with the smaller um, spikes. I think the highlight shows up really well there. Okay, onto the belly. So we have Parasite Brown and Clear Orange. This is about a one-to-one -one mix. There might be a little bit less Clear Orange in here and a little bit more Parasite Brown. You can do it to eye, but it's about a one-to-one. -one. Um, and really, this blended a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, right here, again, I'm just showing, I'm putting it right to that ridge but that ridge is kind of barely there. It's noticeable, not, especially now that you painted to it, but just just showing, I'm just kind of brushing it almost like I would the r rim of the base, where you're just kind of using the back of your brush. In fact, I'm kind of abusing this brush here, so maybe you shouldn't quite do it like that, but <laughs> that's that's how I did it anyway. Um, anyway, this blended really well, and I was, I was concerned it'd be a little bit too bright, and it wouldn't... Um, it would just look kind of cartoony like he was like a clown um, and I didn't want that now it is it doesn't blend super well here but we're gonna add more to it it's gonna work um, if I've learned anything in my time painting briefly it's that with these paints watered down as much as you can you can put quite a few layers on there and a lot of times the more layers you put of different colors and variations and textures the better the end result, especially with this kind of living stuff like this. Though um, I, I do the same when I weather metal, so you know either way we're we're gonna 
keep going on this and make it look really, really nice. Uh, Alright, so Seraphim Sepia is up next, and this is kind of a... It, it's a light brown, but it has a little bit of a orange hue, hence kind of the sepia there. You can think of, you know, just like you would a, a, a filter for a image uh, nowadays. Um, and it, it really kind of bridges the gap really quickly. First of all, it you know gives some detail to those ridges there, but it bridges the gap between that brown and orange ever so slightly to make it a little bit easier there. Now we're getting to Dark Vermilion. While that dried, I decided to go back to the mouth. Uh, always let your washes dry, and so if there's some other bit you can paint while you wait for it, then you're not just wasting time. You better, you know, go eat something or grab a drink or, or do something. And I'm just shoving known oil in there. Okay, then I'm gonna add some just straight up clear orange. Now again, because of the one-to-one, -one, this is going to be very slight, and I'm just kind of getting that entire middle area. It's denoted where his um, tail and stomach meet, and then also there's these kind of um, plates there that you can look at. And then I'm going to grab some Avalon Sunset, which is kind of a an orangey mustard yellow, and I'm just going to kind of very water it down, and I'm going to add two layers, one a bigger one, and then in the middle uh, I'm going to layer on top of it to get, add even more. Next is Cassandora Yellow, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and this is a kind of a, an orange wash, and what's great about this is it's perfect for kind of some OSL or object source lighting that I can put around the edges on his arms where it's kind of covering over there, on his legs that need from it. I'm going to eventually even put it on his base, just to kind of give this idea that this um, color isn't necessarily the color of his scales, but instead he's kind of glowing a little bit. That's what the concept art is anyway. Seal Legion Drab again, this is just for these kind of armor plates that are on there. The concept art shows he's pretty dark, but I didn't want them really dark when he's supposedly glowing here. So, and I'm not too concerned about the edges of that. So first of all, the, the kind of surrounding part of these plates would be glowing a little bit too, right? So they would have a little bit of yellow on them. And they're really, really small, not raised very much, and so it'd be really hard to paint too. I'd have to touch up the, the, the glow, which I'd be afraid I'd, I'd mess up anyway. And then I'm gonna get that same Cassandora yellow, and I'm gonna now put it over the entire base here uh, of this color, and just kind of do a final layer of this to really kind of bring it home. And moving on to Dark Flesh, he has some kind of nasty teeth. So this is kind of a, a very yellow, a very, uh, you know, a Dark Flesh kind of makes sense, but for teeth, yeah, I don't know. And this is just to show that you just kind of have to blotch the eye a little bit. You could leave it as that. I eventually covered the entire iris, or not iris, but the entire little bump for the eye, but you could honestly almost just use it as a highlight here and work just fine. Um, yeah, there's plenty of space, his eyes are wide open, it's actually quite nice. Make sure to get the insides of his teeth, by the way, that's always important. And uh, floss, don't forget to floss. Abaddon Black, this is always kind of scary to me to add black on a pretty much finished model, just because you can really ruin it. One slip of the brush and, and uh, you, you have some work ahead of you. Again, all these are watered down enough to where you could fix it, it just... You, you don't want you don't want to if you don't have to um, but the claws are all big and there's these kind of big fat ridges of kind of skin that go to the claw that kind of naturally stop your brush it's really easy um, you can almost just jam your brush in there and, and, and call it good um, I, I, again just everything about this model and how it's designed is, it makes it so easy to paint I was really impressed there wasn't one part that I thought was difficult or odd or even really hard to reach here um, so yeah, just make sure you get all of his uh, fingers and toes and uh, That little back there again. I was able to get it, but that was probably the hardest part um, But I would not consider it difficult, so I'd still consider him easy Getting this mechanic is standard gray just to do a quick highlight again. It is watered down It's much less noticeable once it's not wet, but it's putting on all the ridges of each of his claws then I'm taking that same Mechanica Standard Gray and I'm painting around his feet and around his tail because the basing I'm going to do won't go all the way to his um, feet. I, I, uh, it would look kind of bad otherwise and I'd end up getting a lot of gray on his feet, which I don't want. Uh, and so just paint around that and then you can just avoid it. After Granite Debris, now I'm doing this differently. If you've watched my Massive Darkness videos, you know that I put this on very heavily. Um, and that was really because I had used Kitty Litter, uh, believe it or not, before on my first ones to um, 
kind of act as like rocks, but it just plopped it on the whole thing. It was quite thick. So this was to kind of mimic that. Here I'm scraping it very close just to give the base a texture, but not really do anything crazy with it. Now, I'm only doing the monsters in this. And again, the mechanics standard gray on the rim. Uh, all the monsters are going to kind of look like this. And I have some other plans, which you'll see for the actual tribes. And I haven't decided on the kami yet but I, ha I have some ideas known oil so i'm going to throw known oil on this and this is going to really pop out all that texture um even more so and just kind of give me some natural shadows and darken the color uh which i didn't want this to be the same looking color as his ridges i, I think that would look kind of bad especially when it was like one's on top and then that's on bottom it would look like he's kind of sandwiched between gray which i didn't necessarily want either um but again i'm wanting all of my monsters to match so i will be doing this on all of them at this point and that's fine this takes a little bit of time just because um i, I don't i don't know why but it but it does so i i you know kept having to load my brush make sure it's nice and, and heavy on there this is not a light a light wash at all and now I have this administered on gray, again very lightly brushing it, make sure that debris is dry or it will scrape off. And this dry brush, again along with the known oil, really pops out that texture and just makes it look fantastic in my opinion. And it's so quick and easy to do, not too bad. You know, using a smaller dry brush you don't want to get anything on his feet. So if you do, just put like the steel legion drab and then cover it in known oil and it'll blend right in. I imagine just fine with all the other color variation in his skin's pretty easy. That's the Cassandra, Cassandora, not Cassandra, yellow, and this is just that glow again, showing that I am doing a matte varnish. That's Citadel's Purity Sealer. I buy that because it's nice and big. And here is the finished model. I really enjoyed painting him. I thought he was quick and easy to paint. I think he looks great, and I think he's a fantastic first miniature to paint for Rising Sun. For future videos, I have a few that the next one's planned out. However, I would love to hear in the comments below if you have any um, requests for future Rising Sun paintings. Additionally, if you did enjoy this video or found it useful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to actually follow me over on Patreon, we can interact there. Uh, you, well, I have a community section there. I do voting. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be painting a whole tribe uh, based off Patreon votes. So if you want to either just support the channel or if you want to be more involved in the direction these videos take, you can check me out over there. There will be a link in the description below as well as my channel page. But you know what guys, that is not an obligation and I do not want you to feel obligated to do so. Thanks so much for watching this video. I always appreciate your viewership and your support. I'll talk to you guys again real soon.